Uh, okay, well, we got the uh, Public Health Subcommittee meeting here, uh, September 23rd, 2021. Let's take a quick uh, run around the uh, here. Uh, Dr. Levine. Here. Dave. Yeah, Wessel. Here. Ingrid. Here. Uh, okay, I think that's for the committee members, right? Um, yes. Julie Helbert. I'm here, remotely. I noticed you weren't wearing a mask. Uh, and, uh, and in the uh, boardroom at the. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, it's Gina. I'm having trouble logging in on Microsoft Teams. So I've dialed in. Okay. Good to see you. Or, uh, I'm not sure what the issue is on Teams for some reason. Having. Yeah, um, I did not personally didn't have any trouble getting in on Teams. But, uh, and I think uh, just okay. I'm just like, letting you know. I'm, I'm still trying Teams. Too. We've um, we're, I think you're in now, Gina. Yeah, it said you were in the waiting room, and it's like to admit. Uh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Megan, is that, is that you or is that Gina on your line? It's like I'm taking like, no. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, and uh, uh, Nelly, you're, you're at the uh, CCB uh, office, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Do you have any other? Uh, uh, Control board uh, uh, staff or members? Uh, no, nope. it's just me present for the uh, cannabis control board in the office. Okay, thanks. Thanks. And uh, Danica, you're there. Um, I'm here. Tina's here. Mark Gorman is here. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move forward. We have, uh, as we discussed uh, on Monday, we have uh, tried to set this up so that we. And reach uh, uh, some decisions on, on warning signs, warning labels uh, pertaining to advertising, and uh, as well as some of the other issues that uh, that pertain to advertising. And I think um, I'm going to turn it to Danica for the for the moment to get this rolling since she prepared the uh, slide deck. Thank you, Mark. Um, also, uh, just to remind uh, members of the public, if you'd like to submit comments, you can do that off of the control board's website. And um, we do have three members of the public with us today. Welcome. Um, and we look forward to any of your comments at the end of today's meeting. So this week, um, and for the last couple of weeks, for the committee members, we've looked at a lot of different elements, warning language, warning symbols, um, and what I wanted to do, I kind of flipped it today because um, the warning symbols is something that I know everyone is incredibly um, passionate about. So what I'd like to do is um, share what I sent, what we sent to you. And can everybody see this? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. So this is the warning symbol that Massachusetts and Maine are using, and they both. They both use it. They actually kind of had a little collaboration or partnership on it, which I thought was very interesting. So um, if if you saw in the other document, the contains THC is mandatory. The um, not safe for kids is optional. But what I wanted to do was just give you an idea of what something might look like in here for this particular one. And I want to also tell you that the package that you're seeing that says fruit goobies is an Illinois package um, that was purchased yesterday. Here was the interesting thing about it. They had no warning labels on it anywhere. And that's 100 milligrams of THC. So I wanted you to see what it could look like and what the difference can make in a package with, with the symbols. 
Um, and again, none of this is to scale, but it gives you the general idea. So I'm gonna flip to the next one, which was the yellow symbol and I, the same thing. So my question and Mark's question would be for the board of these two symbols presented, are you ready to make a final um, rendering of what you would like to do on your packages and your warnings? Um, this is Ingrid. I, I will just say it's totally subjective, but I prefer the contains THC with the red. Okay. And I like the not safe for kids as a separate stop sign warning. Again, totally subjective, but it feels clearer, clearer to me. Okay. Tim? Yeah, I, I also prefer um, the red outline. I think there was some discussion last time of combining the yellow. With the red? Yellow. Yeah. With the red? It, um, kind of, no, go right ahead. I have not finished that. Um, I'm waiting on getting it back from the designer. Um, but the initial, it kind of has this ketchup and mustard look about it. It's a little odd. So we're trying to figure out the right way to make it not look like a condiment, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's the value of actually seeing an example. Um, Correct. But I, I'd love to hear uh, Dr. Levine's thoughts as well. Okay, it looks like he may be on a call, so we can, you know, give him just a moment um, yeah, on that. Uh, but again, back while we wait on him, I will say, um, and we'll talk more about this on Monday. This package was incredibly childproof, and but there were many things that I think were missing yeah, on here to yeah, make it um, a situation where I had confidence in what I was looking at if that makes sense and what I was getting. I'm sorry, I, sorry, I missed what Tim said. Uh, I had Go right ahead. Oh, should I? Um, I was just saying that uh, it would be great to be able to see the combination of the red outline with the yellow background. Um, but, I, you know, unless, unless you're looking to move forward in a quicker way, and then I would, I would lean towards the including the red myself. And Dr. Levine, um, this is the Maine and Massachusetts red and white that they, that you requested to see again. And what I shared with the team is this is an actual package of edibles from Illinois. Yeah, I that, saw that. Okay. Without, without any warnings. Yeah. Without any warnings. So, um, so I wanted you to get an idea of what this would look like. And then this is the same thing in the yellow. So Tim, we'll, we can certainly add that, but I would say that if you truly wanted to have a New England um, almost collaboration across state lines, um, you would get it with a Maine in Massachusetts like we had originally talked about here. So what, can I just add? Oh, um, go ahead. I wasn't looking at the screen. I'm just wondering what Tim thinks about that leaf compared to, like, I feel like the leaf in the previous example that you just gave us with the yellow is a little more, not that, not to be too detail oriented, but I know Tim had mentioned leaf um, yeah, I, accuracy. I thought we had kind of reached consensus that the leaf was better. Um, in those several examples, that one, um, it's a much more true to life leaf that separates itself from, for instance, a maple leaf. Okay, so here is a question then that I have, um, because this will have to be changed by a, a graphic designer, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. Would the subcommittee be ready to say that this is really the final style design, but you would like to see it with the leaf or realistic leaf of this one for final approval. Not to complicate life too much, but one thing I've lost track of with the pace of meetings we're having is what the timeline is. Um, because I feel like we're, we're moving along at a good pace, but maybe 
too good of a week. And I don't want to overcommit at a point in time, uh, especially because I do want to, as, as you mentioned last week, I do want to bring this back to some segments of my health department uh, with their expertise. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean, so I, I, I don't want to you know, make a final decision. Uh, I can turn that around pretty quickly, but at the same time, I want to open it up. I, you know, you know, uh, Dr. Levine, it seems to me that the, you should take the time to do that. Uh, I mean, these are decisions that can be sewn up mm -hmm. you know, uh, really very, very quickly, and you know, we can adjust our final report to the uh, to the control board. And, and, and could you just review that that timeline we are on? Sure. Uh, so. By October 20th, which means we'll need the report um, probably in draft form, you know, at least a week or two but prior to that, which is coming up on us. October 20th is our date, regulations regarding advertising and marketing that limit youth exposure, packaging and labeling, and the consideration of a dispensary as a food manufacturing establishment. So that's a three-week period, essentially. Yes, sir. So um, what we can do here is, so this, this will have to be recreated, which is fine. I have a team that can do that. Um, so there's the edit that will be done and we'll send it um, back in. So I guess my question would be for the, for the group, um, if there is a desire to wait until Dr. Levine's team um, is able to weigh in on this as well and also we get the graphic designer to do the yellow leaf. My question is would you want to continue and go through all of the warning statements and check those off as well or would you like for me to open up the packaging that has been shared with us and we could at least look at packaging today. Because otherwise we're going to be looking at the same thing. So what I mean by that is with the warning language, this was what we sent. Um, so if we'd like to move forward with this, we can, um, but I just want to be realistic here with everyone on this call. So that we're not doing the same thing because we could look at packaging too. Uh, I would suggest that we just pause for a moment and make sure we're all on the same page with the, with the warning label. Sure. Um, because I saw you write change leaf. Yes. Um, and I think your reference to the yellow is the, the leaf from the symbols with the yellow background, correct? Correct, yes. The leaf itself is most likely more effective as black, right? Yes. Okay. So what we're gonna try to do is to um, go with contains THC without mentioning Vermont. The last time we had a meeting, there was some consideration of putting VT there as well. It's not something that I brought into the conversation, but I think somebody must have. This was by the team that's doing universal warning symbols for cannabis. They just, again, presented options. Yeah. Um, okay. So I guess I, I just want to make sure we're on the same page for the um, for the current status is that we'd like to see the the more realistic maple leaf uh, yes. with the red border, and we're also going to try the yellow background. Or you got it. No, nope, okay. we can If you would like to see it, if we're making the modifications, let's make the modifications. Because yeah. we can do it all in one fail sweep. And hopefully that will give um, Dr. Levine some time to uh, check in with his team and bounce it off his people. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Excellent. His team will probably, Dr. Levine's team will probably want to know what the recommendation is of the uh, Control Board Advisory Committee. So I think it is a good idea for us to plow through as much as we can.
that sounds the good. Benefit of uh, of your expertise and your or your instincts on this anyway. Does that make sense, Danica? It absolutely does. Thank you, Mark. Um, Can I ask, are we weighing in about the narrative stuff versus bullet points right now, or just keeping it to the symbol? Um, right. We could do either, but, um, you know, again, let me flip here. This is, as you all probably saw, and this is what it would look like if we did bullet points. This is if you if you recommended um, paragraph, and um, so I wanted to, to put that out there. This is definitely for your recommendation. I would say that this one is, is um, while a better list, it just takes up more room. And uh, this these, in essence, for everyone, this, right over on this side where you see contains THC, that's the warning in Illinois. And um, it's very, very small. And it, it's in paragraph. I think most, what I'm seeing is most are using paragraph formats because it, it does take up less room, but that doesn't make it right, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Less room just means they can do their product naming and pictures with more room. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, not our goal, that's their goal. Right. Exactly. So I will say, in speaking with another uh, person in California, they said one of the reasons they don't see as many advertisements is because there is more disclaimers required. So it's a, it becomes a good a good portion of disclaimer. And I've been in those in that world where you know a third of my ad was a disclaimer sometimes. And that's how it is with auto and other places. Um, so I did want to put that out there. Does it is so? Does anybody want to come to a consensus on the bullet list versus paragraphs, or are we ready to, to even go down that path yet? Like you mentioned, Avery. I, I I'm happy to discuss it more, I, um, but I defer to the rest of the group in terms of what makes the most sense timing-wise. And we have to differentiate appearance slash readability from content correct so this is of course your language this is the adaptation of massachusetts so this is bullet and this is not what i will say is one package um if you want the font to be a certain point size how big the package is is also going to matter um because that can definitely make a difference. There was a another package, which I will also share with you, which was in a round container. Again, no warning symbol. Um, and I could not even read the legal language at all because it was a little blurry and it's so small. So if there are any thoughts on this, um, my recommendation on, for some of this would be a case-by-case -case basis, possibly depending upon the dimensions. But at the same time, it, you know, if it's on an edible container, then you have to think about how you wanted that to be displayed. Or you may say on the edibles that it would be important to um, you know, make it a certain size, no matter what, the packaging. Yeah, I feel, if, if you're showing, uh, saying case by case, I do think there's different concerns regarding edibles as compared to other Agreed. products. Um, and accidental ingestment, I'm sorry, accidental um, ingestion is important to me to point out for edibles, but not so much for the other products. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess. I don't know what all the different products would be, but certainly anything that's edible is different than something that requires heat to smoke it, right? Like that's different. Um, the, the is that what you meant by case by case or? What, what about the case of the person who takes the plant and integrates it into the brownie mix on their own? Um, okay. 
they aren't actually using a, a mix that's built as metal, but they're actually just making the brownies and putting in what they want. That seems to happen a lot. Uh, is that something that we could really um, address in labeling, though? That's what I'm curious about. Maybe not in labeling, but maybe in the safety aspect. As we mentioned, maybe there is a in the safety um, flyer that also can be available online with a QR code. And I'll talk more about QR codes on Monday because I did have one for a product that I could see, which was great. Um, there's opportunity really to say so much more when you say it online. It doesn't mean you don't have to give it to them in print, um, but there could also be a recommendation that every first time customer has to take, you know, we, we need you to take this safety flyer that could be front and back. Tim, it could include some of this stuff. It, it's going to come down to um, the most important things to tell people and then how to get it in their hands. Mm -hmm. Because I will I will also share, and I'll share more with this on Monday, I, would, I did not feel like an educated consumer, which is an interesting thing. Yeah. All right, would you like to, Dr. Levine, go ahead. Looks like you're going to say something. No, I'm okay. Are you sure? Okay. I'm, well, I'm, just, I'm just trying to imagine the person who's purchasing the product. Um, uh, you know, they're probably not going into the establishment and thinking about what we're concerned about because they've already entered the establishment with the purpose of buying something, I think. Um, whether it's the leaf product, whether it's an edible product, or what have you. Um, how much education are they looking for versus how much we want to provide? Because they've already reached that decision point to buy it. As opposed to the consumer who goes into a place and is really like, hey, I've never been in one of these places. I want to learn something. Uh, maybe I'll buy something because my friends have done this. Um, I, I just don't know. You know. We have to think about who the end user is of what we're plastering on these products. Mm -hmm. I would just add, I seem to be thinking oftentimes about the unsuspecting person who is in the house where this stuff is or who doesn't um who's experimenting or does you know isn't the ideal person who went in, the person who went in to purchase it themselves but is lives in that same home or that kind of a thing yeah no i believe me from a public health standpoint i'm really concerned about those people that's why we have the uh drug disposal campaigns get rid of everything in your medicine cabinet all the time because um, that's where adolescent use of opioids and other drugs occurs because they're at a party at their friend's house and they go to the bathroom and by the way in the medicine cabinet they found some Percocet. Um, so here in the house they're in the kitchen getting a glass of water and by the way there's the marijuana product uh, that's going into the brownies. Um, so say you're right it's the same kind of thing. Can I ask a rookie question? Has have there been any cases in these other states where um, there's been any claim of liability? Like if if somebody purchases something, a child takes a you know a gummy edible and overdoses, so to speak, or becomes really impaired or hurts themselves and the, the warnings or the symbols weren't clear enough. Has there ever been that type of case? I do not know the answer to that off the top of my head, but we can certainly ask the question. Um, no, we, we can. And um, I part of the research that 
um, came out of yesterday for me as well goes back to something that this committee has said time and time again, and that is serving sizes. I will tell you that um, I did not get any serving sizes on any of the packages at all. So I was very confused. And, and this is when, when I say educated consumer from being an NACB, but not from a purchasing perspective, maybe the way to say this. So a, a lot of questions were asked. That's a hundred milligram packet of THC. Um, and when I was able to finally get in the packet, there were four sticks in there. But I didn't, on the back, it doesn't say four servings, 25 milligrams of THC each. So I was confused. Um, and again, I don't want to make this, this is not, this is subjective research as well. So I'd like to say that, and this is for discussion purposes as someone who went in to say, I want to buy this, but what does that mean? Um, and then with the pack of gummies, it also did not have serving sizes on it. And it was 10 gummies in one container, another hundred milligrams of THC, um, 10 per, but that's not noted either. So my first recommendation to say to the subcommittee, just as someone there is that, I think that is an integral part of what goes on the packaging, which we'll get to of course on Monday to say what a serving size is and the estimated in each. I totally agree. Um, Tim, so your note was very timely, I guess is what I would say <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Really timely. Yeah. I did notice that the, um, I was surprised that so many came in a package because if you're thinking of overdosing or even innocent accidental overdosing, uh, that's a lot of THC in, in one package. Um, well, you know, I, I kind of, I'm kind of stuck to see, I'm not quite sure if you're looking for comments on that Massachusetts list, because you had that up before. Um, so we've definitely come to some sort of, like, we need a next steps on the, mm -hmm. on the labels, but did you want us to comment on the Massachusetts list in regards well, to what we want in Vermont? We absolutely can. We also can go back here to... The Word document, again, this has all been dropped in there. These are the statements that we put forth. Um, and so if you'd like to make some comments on these now, we would certainly welcome that so that we can you know, keep moving unless you would like Dr. Levine's team to see it first. I mean, we can go either way. I'd like, to, but I would like your feedback. Well, I had some thoughts. It was mainly based on the other part. Uh, I. Had, have it on my desktop I can call okay. it but the but the menu the Massachusetts um, adaptation this one yes okay yep. um, I'd like and maybe um, dr. Levine can comment on this the, the reference to pregnancy and breastfeeding um, marijuana use during pregnancy and breastfeeding may pose potential harms there was a different warning that basically said, do not use this product if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, I'd love to hear if there's definite science, then why is this so milk toast in Massachusetts? Um, or, or should we just be going with, just don't use it <laughs> if you're pregnant or breastfeeding? Uh, any? Is there any insight on that that anyone has, or possibly Dr. Levine? I'm with you. Um, I think we have enough evidence that it should not be used during pregnancy. And the problem is it's still being recommended to an audience of women who are in their first trimester and want to treat morning sickness and things of that sort. Um, and that's probably the worst time to be recommending it. So I think there's probably science enough behind more aggressive. Okay. Um, just a technical note, I think it might be Danica's, I've run a lot of these Zoom calls. Um, it might be Danica's, I'm not sure, but if anybody's in a very loud situation, it's I'm a, so sorry. I, I thought I had muted myself. My apologies. It's okay. It's just that when it's hard to interact without being, but if 
uh, if we get a, a loud bang, then, then the words get cut out. Um, but I got the most of what Dr. Levine said. And I think that it also speaks a little bit to the ordering, if whether we're going with um, bullet points or with a paragraph or allowing it to be decided at the point of you know, proper packaging appropriateness or whatever. Um, it speaks a little bit to the order. Um, you know, uh, because if we're if, if we're talking about adapting this Massachusetts warning language that I'm looking at now, um, that one doesn't hey, it doesn't say this is a marijuana product, for instance, first and foremost. Um, yeah, you're you're highlighting the the alternate language that at least Mark and I prefer, right? Um, so anyway, just a quick discussion at some point about um, how they should be prioritized and right, because the children really is in, is in bold print there or capital letters. Um, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I actually think if it's bullet points that it's actually handy to have a couple that pop like that. So maybe the maybe the capital letters makes it it doesn't have to be the first one if it's in caps. It does draw the eye, you know. So depending on how someone reads something, it helps to change between capitals and no capitals. Um, but just a couple things to just throw out there that that occurred to me bolding as well, you know, yeah. I agree with those comments. I'm also wondering just, I know that cannabis is used as sort of the overarching term and then marijuana. Didn't we seem to want to get away from the term marijuana and move toward cannabis? Or maybe that's just me. I can't remember um, what the best practice is for, I think, there was some discussion about this, maybe in the larger group or the first meeting. You know, a lot of the uh, more recent state laws have basically said, uh, you know, remove from the uh, statutes uh, and the use of the word marijuana and replace it with cannabis. I can't remember whether the, the Vermont, you know, Act uh, 62 or 164 uh, goes in that direction, but we can check it. Can't remember either. No. Well, this committee is part of the Cannabis Control Board. Yeah. The, the, the trend is to use cannabis. I'm not sure if you guys discussed that or not in, in your call, but cannabis is the common term used now. That's what I thought. Yeah. So what we can do with this, um, Dr. Levine, before you hand it back, is I can go back through and change every instance of marijuana to cannabis before handing it over. And then we can put that in there. I'm glad you brought that up, Ingrid, because that was actually um, one of the considerations that I wanted to talk about today as well, just to determine which word you would prefer to use as a subcommittee so that there's consistency. Because even within these bullets, we have interchanged the terms. Mm -hmm. so we have to stick to one or the other. Yeah. And I would also just, I think that the more dire warnings should be at the top, such as, you know, impairment effects can be delayed by two or more hours, impairment, um, you know, ones about driving and immediate health and keeping away from children, I think are important. Whereas this product may be illegal outside of Vermont, definitely lower. Um, so that's just my, again, sort of stating the obvious maybe, but
And are some of these um, acquired in some way, like uh, the product may be illegal outside of Vermont, it's illegal to transport it. Is there a requirement that that happen per the legislator, legislation? That is- Because obviously from a federal standpoint, it's illegal, so you can't rely on that. This comes from, um, and Mark, I don't know if you remember exactly where it is, but it is referenced by, um, let's see, it's, it's referenced in one of the statutes. Because I, I think what we're and driving at is there's things we really want people to notice and see right up front and focus on. And then there are other things that it's like, really, does that matter? Uh, who cares? Uh, it'll only be distracting and won't allow the major messages to really penetrate. Fair. But I if we're required to have them, you know, we need to adhere to them. I just yeah. I want to go back and double check um, where it is, but it was it was one of the one of the it's in one of the languages that I saw, and if it's not, then we take it out. Um, Okay, I just want everybody to know that wasn't me with the truck. <laughs> okay, so then back to, um, we've touched on pregnancy and breastfeeding, and if we jump back to children, um, if there, this came up on our last call about um, about children and marijuana, and don't know if this is this is why this you're seeing this here. Um, any well, a physician wouldn't recommend an over-the-counter cannabis product, would they? In medicinal. In the um, yeah, there's like little, little kids that I think get, yeah. this is what I've heard. Um, it seems odd that this is, we're also trying to, that would be a special warning grouping, wouldn't it? If, if we're discussing, we're not trying to decide for over-the-counter edibles as well as prescribed medicinals are we at the same time this was brought up on the meeting last week which is the only reason we put it here is okay. just to see if it was worth the consideration in any of it so we have to keep this product away and then in case of accidental ingestion which we can completely strike um and i guess does everyone agree then that these are the two primary child piece. I'm not saying we have to approve it, but is there something else we're missing right here? Danica, can I just interject quickly on that third bullet? Yes, um, it's entirely possible though, Tim, that the same product that a parent's picking up for a young child in the dispensary, like a medical dispensary is also sold potentially um, or similarly packaged or packaged by the same company. Um, so I'm just thinking in terms of that third bullet, in terms of ease of use and labeling, I'm just throwing that out there for the committee to concern, uh, to consider as it relates to that third bullet about um, prescriptions. So the same product might be available both in a medical dispensary and in an adult use retail space. I don't know if that'll be true or not, but it's possible. 
I'm just not aware of physicians prescribing pediatric marijuana use other than the pharmacologically available, pharmaceutically available drug to treat rare forms of epilepsy. Um, so that would be a very, very unique subset of kids. But boy, give them a epilepsy, brain-altering substance in their formative years. Boy, that might be happening out there, but I hope not. I'm not. I'm not either. I mean, the the epilepsy is is what I'm aware of too, Dr. Levine. I just know that that same tincture product is available in some states in other venues. Anything additional for kids or want to take this away as, um, but I well, guess, the, uh, go ahead. I, I think you can't have, I mean, if you want to try to address that in a different way, but you can't keep the, the top bold, keep this product away from children. And then on the third bullet say, uh, unless somebody said it was okay. So you either have to figure this out first and, and adapt and change from there or get rid of it entirely, in my opinion. Because if we want to keep this product away from children, that's a bold, clear statement. And yeah. I agree with that. There may be somebody who prescribes, in quotes possibly, um, but I doubt it's a certified physician <laughs> at this point. I mean, think of the liability. Well, and Dr. Levine is saying it's so rare that it doesn't seem prudent to keep it in. Right. I will check with the American Academy of Pediatrics to be sure that is none of this happening. There's also the, there's the legality of this is for 21 and older, correct? It, it is, and the, the second piece of that is, okay, making sure it wasn't me. Um, it is, however, if medicinally they're able to receive this, but also just, it's a second warning, don't give it to your kids, especially if you have your, um, your own prescription at home or um, medicinal marijuana. So again, we put it out there, didn't want to go down a rabbit hole, but if it's, if you just want to, we, Julie, we, we do have some um, considerations for medicinal as well, I believe, in some of this too. Okay. Okay. But the, the key take home point that Tim is trying to hammer home is we can't continue to have bullets that contradict each other. Whether, which is great. Uh, which whether is, it's which... kids, whether it's the age, say 21, and that was and, very straightforward. And that is why we are looking for these edits. Great, thank you. Uh, Danica? Yes, Mark. Uh, I just wanted to uh, point out that. Time. In Act 164, Section 32, statutory revision uh, says changes the word marijuana to the word cannabis Thank you. throughout Vermont law where applicable. Thank you so much. We will get, we will move everything. So you're going to get another copy of this shortly. Okay, so we are, um, we are now in a position that um, we are only having 10 to 40 hours. I'm gonna... I think I'm losing your audio. I, I'm muting myself. I, I think there, there's some weird background thing coming in. My apologies. Um, but what I wanted to add here is I'm going to update this entire thing in the next 30 minutes. 
with marijuana to cannabis. And as a quick reminder, everything we were pulling was from other states, including Maine and Massachusetts, which is why you're seeing those words. But we'll make it what the word requires in your area, and then we'll get the well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Julie, do we have any um, comments from the public? Or Nellie, I'm sorry. Yes. yes, we do. We have a couple. Are we ready to move into public comment? Um, yes, sorry, I was on mute. Hi, this is Ebo Singleton. I'm with Gaston, um, planning on opening a dispensary manufacturer here in Burlington. I just want to uh, talk about the warning symbol a little bit. Um, and as someone who plans on having beautifully packaged product here in Vermont, uh, I don't know, in California where I um, did some business, I know at first you had to have a two color warning label, but then they just switched it. So it could be any color as long as it was a specific size and represented well in the packaging. Oh, sorry. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, maybe to make it unique to Vermont, which would be really cool, would be to do an outline of the state of Vermont with the symbol inside. I know you talked about putting VT on there and that could be a cool like stylized piece. Um, and then the other thing on the, on the warning language, um, again, wanting to have like beautifully packaged product, like, we really have to think about the size of this on our packaging, uh, especially like on pre-rolls and concentrates, things like that, you know, it's tough to, um, tough to, you know, show, uh, showcase a product with like too many warnings on it. And then the last thing, um, the poison control thing, like, is that necessary? Is it a, if a child ingests cannabis, I don't think it's gonna, you know, it's not a poisoning them. Maybe take them to the hospital, call 911, but, um, Poison control seems a bit like a bit much. That would be it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Sure. Would you like me to come into the center? Yep. Come on to one of these chairs here. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Mervis. I am working with Craig Mitchell, who uh, submitted a public statement on August 23rd, I believe, announcing that we will also be going for licenses in the social equity category. Uh, I actually began my career with the Department of Health here in Vermont, so I take it very seriously and uh, came into cannabis about five years ago. Um, I second the opinion about poison control, but I, I do think it's a great thing, obviously, the subcommittee sees it as necessary to be there. I would just emphasize or encourage you to really think ahead about how to prepare poison control and the police for how to handle those calls, what the intake would look like, what types of things you would address. Um, I believe that the previous public comment is getting towards, you know, you don't want to scare people. The, the current language does kind of play into the um, scare tactics around cannabis as opposed to the guidance that could be provided by those resources when called. Um, I also want to emphasize the focus on sizes, so sizes of fonts and symbols. Um, I too worked in California and Massachusetts and saw how uh, without those very strict guidelines on the sizes of uh, the font and the symbol, you can see a lot of distortion. So just keep that in mind um, that the actual, mm, I'm blanking on the word, uh, the size of the symbol. Um, also, something that you could consider, because I did hear, you know, obviously the subcommittee is more focused on the information being present than the design of the package. You could, in the, in the field of sizes, you could also consider saying that the warnings need to take up either, uh, you know, up to a quarter of the visible space on the product um, or limit it to, you know, no more than a quarter. So those are other ways that I've seen that done very effectively. Um, and thank you for the change from marijuana to cannabis, but that's it for my public, for my comment. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, that's it for public comments in the room. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next steps on this, everything's been changed. Um, 
from marijuana to cannabis to follow the statute, but also um, a couple of additional items will come in. I'll send this back out, Nelly, to you so you can upload it into the team so that they can take it back. Um, we'll be talking packaging on Monday, and so packaging will be shared um, later today, a, a, a pre-look for Monday's calls. Tim, you're on mute. Sorry, I have a, a secondary mute button here um, because I'm on a busy truck road. I mentioned that I can't make Monday um, in a previous email a few emails ago, but it might have been missed. Uh, I'm just wondering if you can just get me some materials Sunday or whatever, and I can just uh, make some notes or, or whatever and just chime Absolutely. in that way. Absolutely. Um, the, the examples are, re are almost ready to go. There's one more thing that is going to be added, so they should be out later today or, or first thing in the morning. Thanks. So no problem. So, so this is definitely, um, definitely something we need to, um, you know, keep track on dates, um, for putting forth recommendations or at least, um, recommendations that may need, you know, additional considerations, but Monday we'll be looking at packaging and, um, taking a deeper dive on that and getting this over to you, Dr. Levine and Ingrid and Tim, if you could, you know, go through and, and I'll put this back in the Word document if easier for you, then all you have to do is write on it or over it. Um, I do, uh, agree in the prioritization mark and I do will get all those out there and uh, um, hopefully we can get this to a point of comfort for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, as well, Danica, um, not to plow over the uh, old ground today, but uh, since there's an expectation that the Department of Health will have a chance to take a look uh, that um, I don't think we need to struggle and lose time over, you know, a lot of um, a lot of details. If we just are going to send them our best recommendations here, and uh, and have a have a bit of a dialogue, and, and have enough time to have a bit of a dialogue. So, uh, I, you know, hopefully we can uh, sew some of this up on uh, on Monday. So if there is consideration, um, Tim and Ingrid, especially since Dr. Levine will be taking it through um, his channels, if you could give feedback, you know, even by tomorrow would be fantastic on, uh, and again, I'll get you the Word documents back with all these changes we talked about. We'll get the other symbol, but if you could at least give a first, you know, good uh, feedback, if there's something you don't like or want to change or whatever, then we can at least um, put that into consideration. I'll do my best. Thanks. Thank you. And just from my standpoint, just keep in mind we are in the midst of a pandemic, so our department's response may not be as timely as you would think it could be. Understood. Understood. Is there any other questions or anything else um, that anyone would like to bring up? No? Did we have to approve minutes from last meeting or was there no quorum to approve? There was no quorum for the 16th. Um, we can approve meeting minutes for the 13th or if folks would like to um, do so. You could also do that next time, Danica. Okay, you could thanks. start Sorry. the meeting next time with that. That sounds great. Thank Just you so to... much. Thank you. Okay, so we are at the hour. Um, Thank you, everyone. Mark, if you want to wrap us up. With a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Please move I... this process along, Lord. <laughs> uh, do I hear a, move, uh, a motion to adjourn? Sure. We have a second. Second it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.
thank you.